Welcome back to A Bard in Skyrim. My name is Ricky and this is Daniel. Also, that's Barth and Axe. Last week, we managed to get the rest of the words of power to the Become Ethereal shout. So I thought this week, maybe it's time for us to take on Alduin. So we've come back to the throat of the world so we can read another scroll, so we can learn Dragonrin, so we can maybe defeat Alduin. All of this is just way overwhelming for Daniel right now, to be honest with you. So he's going to talk for a few minutes. I'm not going to listen to him. And right here is the time wound. See this, this thing right here? This is the time wound. And here's the thing about the time wound. It's stupid buggy. Like, most of this game isn't as buggy as people, like, scream about on the internet. On the other hand, there's this. So, I'm gonna cut out this bit in the game. But uh, suffice it to say, Daniel is going to love it. And we are back after that long cutscene that I cut out. And as soon as the game comes back, there we go, we can see Alduin. Now... So, I'm not really too worried about what Alduin's saying right now. Uh, we just learned Dragonrin. This is not going to be fun. Because I just realized that I forgot to get the Fortify Shout. Blessing of Talos. Which, ah, uh, fine, whatever. Shut up, Alduin. No one likes you. Hey, guess who forgot to do it in the order? Yeah, that wasn't smart. Okay, hang on. No, you... Although you do have to be careful because occasionally you also hit Parthenax. It's not that big a deal. Just be careful. I don't get hit by Alduin. Okay, you know what? Screw this. We're using Frost Breath. And the reason we're using Frost Breath is I cannot stand the way... Uh, hang on. Uh... And guess what? I think I hit them both again. I did! <laughs> Sorry, Parthenax. I did not mean to do this. It's fine. Nah, 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 you can't hit me. Um. Um. <laughs> I sort of got stuck. Whoops. Okay, so. Um. Let me explain what happened in that little cutscene thing that I cut out real fast. Just because I feel like you maybe want to know. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Uh, but basically what happened was Alduin fought these old, these three ancient Nords. Um, who created, who absolutely created Dragonrend, and he killed one of them, and then they used the, uh, they used the Elder Scroll, that's, that's what they used, they used the Elder Scroll to send him forward in time, and basically, yeah, that's what happened, we'll meet them later in the game, if you didn't know all that, I mean, it seems unlikely given this game's age, I mean, Parthenex can kill him, and if, if you're doing this shout only type thing, even without mods, you can spend all your time um, Alduin, this is just, you're not even fighting me. You can keep shouting Mark for Death at him. And it, uh, did I hit either of them? There we go. Finally, he stood still for just a split second. Yikes. This is the problem with fighting Alduin. No matter how you're fighting Alduin, his dragon rend is, it's not really long enough to keep him on the ground. The nice thing is it does stagger him for that briefest of seconds, letting you switch over to another shout. So, uh, this doesn't seem like it's going to take us too terribly long, because like half the episode I've recorded so far was just the cutscene, which took me two tries to get through. No, 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 no. There we go. That was close, man. I almost forgot. The nice thing is once he's on the ground, once you get him halfway done. But oh my good lord. Oof. This shouting stuff is, is, it's so much more difficult than just hitting him with weapons. Yeah, I don't like the fact that dragons can just shout forever because they're actually using magicka. In case anyone is wondering. Um, yeah, dragons use magicka. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. Oh, good, I hit him. Okay, good. Because I really thought I had actually gotten him down to halfway, but I guess I'm just barely there. This would actually be a lot better and easier if I had remembered to go get the Blessing of Talos. Because I could just get the um, Fire Breath and Frost Breath stacking a bit. Sorry, Parthenax, he sort of landed in my way. We're going to jump back here for a second, and we're going to go become Ethereal. Because I can heal in this thing. I don't have the Become Ethereal boost. You know what? Parthenax is doing a pretty good job. I'm not sure I need to help out that much. 
Come on. The nice thing is you... Yeah, again, if you just get the Mark for Death shout stacking on him, Barthanax will bite him to death real quick. It's really convenient. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Yes, I have. Cool. So, how do I beat you then? So why on earth would I talk to Esperin or Ongear when I can talk to the incredibly bloodied up Parthenax? And let's be honest, I'd rather talk to Mario than uh, Christopher Plummer. You truly have the voice of a Dova. Yep. Alduin's allies will think twice after this victory. Sweet. Well, I gotta find out where Alduin went. Yes. One of his allies could tell us. Sure. Mat Mahus. But it will not be so easy to convince one of them to betray him. Perhaps the Haf Kasayun, the palace in Whiterun, Dragon's Reach. It was originally built to house a captive Dova, a fine place to trap one of Alduin's allies. Hmm? Alright, so the game wants me to do the long nonsense peace treaty thing. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I will do this, but I will not put you through it. It is insufferable. And I am not that cruel. We have a couple of uh, quests we can do. So Lisbeth gave me this last week. Or actually before I started recording last week, rather. Before I do any of that, I'm going to go talk to Ongear real fast. And I am going to get another Word of Power quest. So Ongear just told me to go find the Word of Power in Autumn Watch Tower. Now, Autumn Watch Tower is right here. It's a dragon thingy, but it also contains Marked for Death, which I've actively been trying to avoid getting, so I don't suspect we'll be doing that this week. However, we are going to go to Bruca's Leap Redoubt, and we are going to get Lisbeth's shipment back for her. Okay, so Daniel defeated Alduin. Big flippin' deal, whatever, right? You know, I mean, sort of defeated Alduin. He's not actually, you know, dead yet, but we'll get to that. He imagines at some point he'll figure out a way to kill Alduin. So when Daniel's doing these kinds of quests, it makes him think quite a lot about his old friend. You know, he misses his friend Q, and he thinks about going home. He knows he can't go home until Alduin's defeated. He knows he really can't go back home. I mean, he can. Because, you know, who says you can't go home, right? Like, you can. It's just that going home will sometimes mean... Dealing with things he doesn't want to deal with. Come on. Um, but all of that I will get to in probably the last episode when we're running around Sovngarde and um, Soldolphin. Skulldolphin, rather. So what they used to do... I mean, I've talked a little bit about this in the past. Not that Daniel needs Q anymore, but what they used to do was Daniel would kind of stealth his way in while Q would distract the bandits... Or whatever they were going after, usually bandits, to recover something that was stolen. You know? Come on, hide. Oh, yeah, this is the place you can just sneak in. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, you can't. If, you, if you're stealthy enough, you can sneak in because this isn't anywhere near either of them. And there is the statue. And a circlet of conjuration, which I'm pretty sure I already know the enchantment to. But so, yeah, Daniel would usually do the sneaking like this. Sneak in, steal the thing that they need to steal to get back, recover. They were they were really good at recovery. They were recovery specialists. Um, they did it quite frequently, specifically to make money, to make a little money. Sometimes Daniel would do it by himself, sure. Uh, but sometimes Daniel did it with... Q. Actually, he did it with Q a lot. Honestly, he just misses his friend Q more than anything else at this point. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. The longer he is from home, the more he misses his home, especially because he took that trip right before he came to Skyrim. And things did not go well when he was there. Things weren't going well at home to begin with. He's thinking, you know, he'd really like to get this Alduin thing wrapped up so he can, you know, get back home. It's not that he hates Skyrim. He came to join the Bard's College, and to be honest with you, he learned a lot more 
than just joining the Bards College. That was, uh, sure, a part of it, but discovering he was dragonborn and learning to shout and, well, literally speak in tongues. His life is so different now that going home doesn't seem nearly as scary as it did when he left. He's been thinking a lot about this lately. Maybe going home. He just misses his friend. He just misses his family. Hello, Lisbeth. No, I'm not Arnold. I found the statue. Oh, there it is. With the help of Parthenax, we did take down Alduin. Kind of. So we're not quite ready yet, in my opinion, to actually head to Skulldolphin and do all of that. So that's going to be a little while from now. So Daniel has this really lovely view from his house. It overlooks this very lovely Dwemer ruin. And he's been thinking lately, maybe we should see what's going on down there. This has been a Bard in Skyrim. Thank you for watching and come back soon for more Skyrim.